It's automotive update time. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers, and that ain't no Charmin. <laughs> Today I'm joined by Elizabeth, so let's get right into it. If you haven't noticed, plenty of dealers have either gone back to providing service, as in car repairs, or are increasing their service capacity at the dealership. So why would they do this? Two main reasons. Service bays drive sales. Have you ever taken your car into service at a dealership and been immediately approached by a salesman the moment you walk around to get a cup of coffee? Yes. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually part of the sales strategy. They send sales staff to service and see if they can convert people to buyers. The second reason beyond fixing cars is that on the flip side of them getting you to buy one of their cars, well, they just gain access to a captive used car inventory that drove right into their service bay. That's your car you brought in for service. You need to be aware of this because some dealers are so ruthless about trying to get your car from you that they'll pull entirely underhanded tricks on you to get your vehicle from you. For example, our viewer Leroy writes, I worked in service at a Ford dealership. They told the customer his repair wasn't under warranty. So next thing you know, he traded the truck. Then they repaired the truck for the sales department using the customer's warranty and then sold it on the used car lot. Hmm. They told the customer a bold faced lie and coerced the vehicle from him and then stole the additional value that the truck would have been worth had it been repaired. The summary is this. Watch for dealers who put more pressure on you to bring your cars into service or give you free oil changes, but never forget the biggest part of this strategy is to get your car away from you. On the subject of dealer service are also dealer body shops. Do you have any idea how much an average bid is on collision repairs? In 2017, it was 2,900. In 2020, it was 3,400. While the number of accidents on the road were actually down this past year because people were staying home. That's right. Revenue per repair is up. Do yourself the favor and make sure you have proper car insurance because you don't want to get stuck with one of these Whopper car repair bills. And it's the law to have insurance. So make sure right. you're covered and you have really good coverage. We've put focus on sales training on the channel lately, and based on our recent poll, more than 90% of you want us to continue that, so we'll oblige you. There's a new company out there called Quantum 5. It's a sales training company based out of Scottsdale, Arizona, focusing on automotive sales. David O'Brien is the company's founder. They are using artificial intelligence and other technology, as well as person-to-person -person training to teach traditional sales skills. I emphasize traditional, because hopefully David O'Brien is recognizing what's wrong with all the traditional training being offered by guys like Steve Richards and Andy Elliott, to name a couple. This new method of training is supposed to recognize needs and desires of customers and learn more about what motivates them to buy products and services. I'm curious if any of you sales guys in the audience have been through Quantum 5 training resources and if you care to comment below. And then maybe David O'Brien will send us an invite to come down to his training facility and review their content. Now, for all of you car buyers out there, Quantum 5 is putting you into one of four boxes. Number one, a driver is in a hurry and wants the bottom line. Number two, an analytical wants more detail and the time to mull it over. Number three, an amiable likes to build relationships but has trouble deciding. And number four, an expressive likes to express feelings and is an impulsive decision maker. You know, that sounds very similar to disc profiles, Kevin. It does. So pay attention. If you haven't studied how your personality type can affect your buying tendencies, you might want to start taking notes. They're teaching it to sales staff. For the record, we have nothing negative to say about Quantum 5 training program. And David O'Brien, this is your chance to invite us down and show us what you've got. If it's good, we'll sure as heck be telling people about you it. You better believe we will. If you've ever been caught in a hailstorm, you know how frustrating it can be to have your vehicle pounded full of little dents. I've had that happen before. Yeah. In Denver, they had nine out of the most costly hailstorms happen since 2008. And some of those storms created nearly $300 million in hail damages in the area. Thanks to creative thinking, however, some dealers have come up with a solution. They installed a translucent high strength netting that actually is almost invisible mm -hmm. and it's stretched tightly over the vehicles in the dealership parking lot. The netting stops hail and yet keeps the vehicles visible to customers without any unsightly look. If you happen to be in the Denver area, check out the netting system at Champ Automotive Group. It's actually pretty cool. For you SUV fans out there, watch for at least 104 dealers around the country to invest in what are being called dedicated stores for SUVs. What's pushing all this? For the most part, Ford Bronco. Ford Bronco was actually one of my favorite SUVs yeah. back in the day. 
As most of you will recall, the full-size Ford Bronco disappeared in 1996, but it is back this year. For the Ford dealers who decide to go with the Bronco storefront, they will be given a slight increase in Bronco allocations. And so, that's important because they get more of them. Right. So if this is something that you're really excited about, look for a Bronco store near you. And maybe we'll tour one of these Bronco stores for you and share our thoughts and let us know what you think. Have any of you been to Seattle recently? Mayor Jenny Durkin says she is focusing on improving residents' quality of life. Now, what is one of the big plans to make that happen? Seattle is drafting a blueprint to electrify city transportation by 2030. They want to convert to using electric bikes, scooters, taxis, Ubers, and Lyfts. They want to convert their entire municipal fleet to EV vehicles as well and do more to encourage residents to walk. Now, I open this by asking if you've been to Seattle recently for a reason. I think Mayor Durkin might be ignoring a little pesky problem she has in her hands. Seattle has been a near dumpster fire for some time now. I actually drove through many of the Seattle downtown streets a few months back with friends. Well, since our vehicle is equipped with cameras and we were horrified by what we saw, we recorded what downtown Seattle looks like. You can see some of the images here. Believe me, if you saw it years ago and thought of it as a beautiful high-tech city, wow, are you going to be disappointed yeah. if you go there now. What are they going to do about all those smashed up and boarded up businesses? Anybody want to comment down below on that? We've received a lot of questions about both Vroom and Carvana. That's right. We'll put out videos on these organizations soon, but there's something in particular that we wanted to bring to your attention today. In the digital age, places like Vroom and Carvana have really led the way with what industry folks refer to as convenience messaging. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen the ads where they talk about the typical pain in the butt you have to deal with at the car dealers. And we all know about that, don't yeah. we? See, it's not just us who points that out. Well, these ads are ruffling a few feathers from the franchise dealerships. For example, Vroom's Super Bowl ad, which was called Dealership Pain, was a 30-second spot showing a car salesman threatening a customer who wanted to leave with an electric shock before fading to an image of a customer relaxing in his yard watching Vroom deliver him a car. That's right. Steve Richards, you want to comment on this one? <laughs> you want to tell your audience um, that places like Vroom and Carvana know nothing about all those traditional dealerships and all the customers flocking to them are just doing so out of pure ignorance? Go ahead, comment below and enlighten us here on the Homework Guide channel. We can't wait to hear your pearls of wisdom. By the way, when Steve Richards complained about our reaction videos on his content, saying we were using him for YouTube traffic and clearly out of content here, he was letting us know how little he actually knows about how YouTube works. You see, if a channel our size, 325,000 subscribers and growing, does a review of your little channel like Steve's under 40,000 subscribers, the channel that benefits the most from any traffic that is created is the little channel. You see, that's something the old farts are still trying to learn about technology and online traffic. Well, Steve wanted you to be the judge. Should we do more reactions on his videos? Well, 90 plus percent of you gave us a resounding yes on our recent poll. If you still want to, you can go vote on our community page on the YouTube channel. Just click on that community button and you'll find the poll. I'm going to close with this. Steve Richards attempted to take a swipe at Elizabeth here on a recent video he did. Liz didn't care in the least bit <laughs> because she is used to old insecure guys like him feeling butthurt about being outsmarted by a female. Guys like Steve are actually in abundance on dealer lots, a place that Liz has spent a ton of hours. If you ever wondered why Steve did the video on the 30-year veteran salesman to begin with, well, it's because he can't handle being bested by anyone. His fragile ego just can't take it. But Steve really stepped in it this time and demonstrated how classless he could be when he took a ignorant swipe at Liz saying she couldn't get a job anywhere. Did you know he said that? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is where ignorance gets a person. Steve has no clue who Elizabeth is. And trust me, she has not uh, okayed me to say this. But I want to share with you a little bit about Liz because she never brags about herself but she's nothing like Steve. So let me take a moment to introduce you to who Liz actually is. You see, she grew up around a bunch of older white haired men. None of them were car salesmen. They were all of her uncles and her father, all within a short drive of her house. They were businessmen, farmers, professionals, military veterans, men of character and integrity. It was from them that she learned the values of honesty, integrity, personal courage, and unselfishness. Liz is highly educated with multiple degrees. She graduated a grigia cum laude. I actually learned that term because of her. A special distinction given to graduates with straight A's and multiple degrees. That's Liz for you. Wicked smart.
She's multilingual, has lived outside of this country, studied other cultures, learned from other people. Outside of the homework guy, she has coached professional people both individually and in group settings. She's worked with students from a number of schools. She has been featured in a variety of shows and seminars. Everyone who works with Liz gets better and smarter. At a young age, Liz has both time and financial freedom, something most people will never accomplish in a lifetime. You might have picked up on that when we've talked about cars because you always notice she's a cash buyer. That's not an accident. This year, she will be speaking with me at a business seminar in Texas in front of an auditorium full of top shelf executives from around the country who are there to learn about success. Well, to top it all off, Elizabeth is a top vocalist and an accomplished concert level piano player. In a number of careers, she would be immediately hired anywhere she wants to go. But she is here at the homework guy because of a huge passion of hers of helping other people, just like her father and her uncles did. In the car business, she's put in thousands of hours voluntarily on multiple dealer lots helping car buyers just like you. She didn't have to do any of this, but she wanted to. She has met hundreds of dishonest operators in this business and knows it inside and out. She has sat in the sales training classes. And you remember all those Saturday morning? Oh boy, don't remind me. <laughs> oh my God. She has seen the horror stories and has no time for dishonesty. She's only a threat to people who parse words, make up baloney, and then expect people to believe their nonsense. Well, everyone, that's Liz. And that's why she fits so well on the homework guide team. And trust me, she didn't want me to say anything. You did of that. not tell me you were going to say that. <laughs> All right, stop. Okay, if you appreciate our automotive update today, smack that great big thumbs up and leave us a comment below. Include hashtag the homework guy and check us out on your favorite social media platform. There are links below. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here, they'll be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. But if you really want to help, and if you want yourself and your friends to be the luckiest people on the planet, well, what should they do, Liz? Well, then help us get the word out and share our content and encourage others to subscribe too because our subscribers are always getting lucky. Yes, they are. And your great luck helps bring fairness and honesty to the car business. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter today with the remarkable Elizabeth. And now you know the rest of the story on Liz anyway.